find the winner of Mangya Ulsan Prize 2020, we had to travel all the way down under to New Zealand. Yeah, so I got into sailing pretty young, uh, down in my hometown of Tauranga. So yeah, my dad was into sailing when he was uh, a kid and um, thought it would be a good thing for well, probably my brother first to learn and then I was kind of just dragged along and I uh, really got into it there and you know, I think as a young kid that, that freedom you get of being able to go out on the water and you know, hoon around and you know, some small boats is pretty cool. Already at an early age, Peter knew what he wanted to achieve. Probably Team New Zealand or around the world and stuff like that. He was always really, really competitive when he was young. Always liked to be the first at anything he did. I hate losing when you know you could have done something about it or you know you haven't really put in enough work. He won his first international title at the World Championships in 420 in 2006. This was the starting point of an unparalleled international career. Yeah, that was actually the first world champs I ever won in the Canary Islands. Yeah, so I've been pretty lucky to be involved in some pretty cool teams, you know, throughout my career. Um, you know, I think the first one when I first got to the Olympics, sailing a 470 with a, a guy, Carl Evans, was you know, pretty incredible as a young guy to, to kind of make it to the Olympics uh, early on in your career. After the Olympics in Beijing 2008, he starts cooperating with his friend Blair Tuke in the spectacular 49er. And it's a real success. Together, they will go on to win six world championships in 49er. Look at the difference. New Zealand on a roll. Burling and two putting on an absolute masterclass of how to do it. Before the Olympics in Rio, they had 28 regattas without a loss. Um, it was incredible to get a, a first Olympic medal in London um, you know, and back that up, winning a, a gold in Rio. Gold in Rio to the New Zealanders! Yeah, I think there's a lot of things I'm super proud of in my career, but you know, probably one of the standouts was you know, going to Rio and you know, winning a gold medal for, for our country. You know, I think it's something that you know, when you're a young guy, you grow up and it's kind of the pinnacle of you know, small boat sailing and you know, to also be you know, team captain. and how to carry the flag into the, the stadium in Rio and then probably put together one of our, our best performances is you know, something I'm incredibly proud of. And then kind of been involved in Team New Zealand a, a lot and you know, with a successful cup campaign you know, going into 2017. Life hasn't slowed down for Pete Burling and Blair Chuk since they won sailing gold at Rio. Rest and recreation is on the back burner. But it's not just Pete and Blair anymore. They're now part of a team Emirates, Team New Zealand. It's just very, very different, you know, the America's Cup. Together with the Mange Ulsan Prize winner 2018, Grant Dalton, Peter wins his first America's Cup. Oh, it's just sinking in and, you know, as a Kiwi growing up back home, you know, watching our country compete for the America's Cup and, you know, to be able to do that at a pretty young age and to bring it back home is, you know, just an unreal feeling. More recently, uh, also doing a, a lap around the globe in the, the ocean race. Pete joins Team Brunel, and the challenges are different in a round-the-world race. No, it's definitely you know, a pretty incredible experience sailing around the world. Um, you're a more well-rounded sailor you know, after you know, having competed in all the different sides of it. So, really cool part, you know, seeing Cape Horn. Um, it's you know, a place that not many people in the world really will ever see like, with their own eyes. So, you know, I think it just shows you, you know, how powerful the ocean is down there and how powerful the weather is. And, you know, it's definitely a place where humans probably shouldn't really be. 
you know, it's really cool to do, and, but I don't think you'd want to you know, do it every day. But you know, also just sending it down one for you know, 10 days or something uh, like we did. You know, an incredible race and you know, it's something that you know, I think, you know, just keeping pushing the technology, you know, keeping the boats you know, at the leading edge of, of the sport and you know, hopefully keeping the racing close will just keep drawing people back in. Facing the last leg, there are still three boats that can win the Ocean Race 2017-18. Pete and his team Brunel ends up in third place. Back home, after the Round the World adventure, Pete and his companion Blair are taking on new projects. You know, plenty of different projects, but I you know, love the, the challenge of the range. Yeah, one of the really cool things about sailing around the world is you, know, you get to go down to the Southern Ocean. You know, one of the amazing things you see down there is the albatross. They're a good metre on my wingspan, um, you know, being up around three metres. You're there pushing the boat hard, you're tired, and then you just see these albatross cruise past you and they just make it look so easy. Yeah, it makes you feel pretty good when you see them. In the last 12 years, we've lost two thirds of the breeding population of the Antipodean albatross, you know, two a day. It really is on the fast track to extinction unless we intervene and learn more about these birds and, you know, try and slow the rate down. One of the females they tracked last year did 178,000 kilometres over a nine month period uh, before she disappeared, unfortunately. But, you know, looking at how long it takes us to sail a similar kind of distance, it would take uh, years. Claire and myself have, well, a little over a year ago now, set up a marine conservation charity called Low Ocean. And, you know, it's a real passion of ours. You know, the ocean is where we spend a lot of our time and, you know, we really feel like we aren't looking after it well enough. And you know, at Live Ocean we really want to amplify and accelerate you know, promising science and action around you know, looking after it better. Yeah, I think if New Zealanders can't lead this issue to the world, then I'm not sure who will. The similarities between Pete and Mang Ye are striking. Yeah, unfortunately I don't have any memories of Magnus myself, um, you know, other than the, the legend that is. Um, you know, he's uh, sounded like a larger than life kind of uh, guy that, you know, Made a, had a massive influence on the ocean race and you know definitely you know I've got some pretty fond memories of the ocean race and you know, it's pretty uh, exciting that you know this is in line with that. The Mange Ulsan Prize 2020 is awarded to Peter Burling from New Zealand.